Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video I'm going to show you our most highly requested integration, our instance on the BitFocus Companion. This allows Zoom OSC to have a really tight control of your stream deck and to be able to display information that's really helpful and relevant to you and to make programming it uh, very uh, generalized and easy to use and repeatable so it has value among many meetings. So this is something we're really excited to share and we're going to do it over the course of a couple of videos using specific case studies so that you get a sense of how it works. So in this video I'm going to show you how to display the names on the keys. I'm also going to show you how to highlight the keys based on when somebody raises their hand in Zoom so that you know that, hey, this is somebody I might want to pin on my display to bring them into a broadcast. So let's go ahead and build it. What we are looking at here is the BitFocus Companion, and specifically it's an experimental build. Uh, the integration for Zoom OSC is currently listed under the nightly releases section. BitFocus hasn't updated their main app yet. When they do that will be a instance that you can get there, but uh, for now you can go and get ahead and get it from the nightly build section. Um, what you're looking at right now is the sort of the generic OSC instance. This is the companion config that you may be familiar with from having used our application before in the past. Um, this was a quick preset that we created just to get people uh, comfortable using Zoom OSC with companion. Um, so for example, when I click on a key here, what you see is that we're just using a generic OSC instance. You type in the string and you type in the values. And again, the way that you would get this is by going to our website and going to the integrations page where you'd find a preset and then you would know how to fill out the preset by looking at our resources and our specifically our API list and searching and saying, okay, I'm going to build a command and I'm going to grab a user action and here's the arguments it takes, so on and so forth. And, and that's how you'd know how to construct these keys. So what we've done is we've made this much, much easier and we're also able to take advantage of the outputs of Zoom OSC to influence the keys of your stream deck directly. So how do you do this? Well, if you go over to your, um, your instances section, you can now search for liminal, L-I-M-I-N-A-L, and you will be able to add a Zoom OSC instance. Now, when you do this, um, you are immediately brought into the settings page. And let's take a look at our Zoom OSC settings here. So if I drag this over to my main display, and I look at my settings, I'll see that uh, Zoom OSC is currently looking uh, on uh, transmission port 7000. Um, so this is where it's sending information and this is where it's looking for information, 9090. So what we wanted to do was we want to tell our companion instance to listen to Zoom OSC on feedback port 7000. So once we apply that, you'll see that the number of instance uh, dynamic variables just grows dramatically. Uh, and there's all these different things that we've built to give you information about the Zoom call right onto the keys. So once you've done that, um, you look back at your instances section, you see we got an OK. Uh, the only other tweak I'm going to make is underneath our console section, just to make things a little more manageable. I'm going to set my logging level to errors and warnings only. This way I'll only have information displayed on screen that um, is uh, more relevant as when it's connected. There's a lot of data transmitting between Companion and Zoom OSC. So right now I just want to filter for warnings and errors, and I'm just getting warnings about gallery tracking, which we've talked about how um, that's sort of something we're working on in Windows. So if we go back over to our buttons page, we can get started. And let's go over to a fresh page. And what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, list the usernames of the people on the call on the keys. And we are going to then uh, leverage feedback information to color the key based on whether their hand is raised or not. And again, we want to build this in a generic way. You know, one, you know, one thing you could do in the past is, you know, if you look at the Zoom call here and you look at the gallery view and say, okay, Pat, John, Jane, and Liz, well, I can just go in and type the, you know, type their name there. And yeah, that's, that's putting their name on the key, but that's sort of only helpful for this particular Zoom call. You want to build a controller that's usable over and over and over again, and no matter what the meeting is. And that's the power of dynamic variables inside a companion. So we're going to be able to put the names automatically on this key uh, when Zoom OSC joins the call and your stream deck will automatically update itself. But um, the first thing we want to do is actually assign a target ID to everybody. Um, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new button, a regular button. And this is going to be my update function. So I'm going to type in update, and then I'm going to filter for Zoom OSC. So you'll see here, these are the original options that we've always had where you can construct an OSC message by referencing the API. But now there's a whole bunch of new actions here, and these ones you don't even have to think about OSC. For example, I'm going to check a uh, general local application action, and I'm going to select the update function from that list. And this was now a completely GUI-based way of doing that. I didn't have to go in and type slash Zoom slash update and make sure I had the syntax correct. I could just select it from this list. I'm going to add one additional um, uh, general application action. And the one I'm going to add is uh, the list command. 
So this will tell us to send a list back. The list output is what the companion integration is based off of. So by doing this, I'll uh, be able to update the information and then send a request for information back inside of, uh, inside of the Stream Deck to get it up to speed. And we'll continue to optimize this workflow and make this simpler as we continue to update the integration, which is sort of in a beta state right now, but we are feeling comfortable sharing it. So I'm gonna style the key, make it red, uh, and I'll, I'll use this key to and I'll use this key to assign a target ID to everybody in the call and pull that information right back in. So uh, now I'm ready to put names in the keys. So I'm going to click on the first key. And to use a dynamic variable inside of the BitFocus Companion, you start by typing the dollar sign, then an open parentheses. The name of our instance is Zoom OSC. I'm going to put in a colon. And now I've already begun to see a lot of autocompletes here and I and I could use that. But um, sort of the philosophy of it is that I want to use somebody by their username. And uh, I want to now specify them by target ID. So I want to display the username of somebody with a particular target ID. And I want to start with target ID zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just allow this to autocomplete. And lo and behold, what's happened here is the name Pat has appeared. And that is because Pat has target ID zero. So now what's happened is in any Zoom call that I join, the person who has target ID zero will have their username displayed on this key. So I can easily repeat this key. And if I just copy paste it four times and then I update this number, the names you will see will update to the appropriate name that corresponds to that target ID. So now Pat, John, Jane, and Liz are here, but if I was in a different call, these names would be different. And uh, that's a really exciting workflow um, to basically optimize the Stream Deck automatically right when it hops into a call. So uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to build an action. Uh, right now, you know, we're just displaying the name here, but if you press this button, it doesn't actually do anything. So we want to give it to something to do. Like I said, in this demo, we're going to actually pin somebody. So I'm going to add a key down action. I'm going to search for pin. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pin to uh, screen one for now, let's say. And I'm going to pin somebody based on their target ID. And I'm going to target ID zero for this position. I'm going to copy the same thing. I'm going to use another pin action here. And I'm going to select them again by target ID. And this one is going to be target ID one. And then I'm going to repeat this again. And this is going to be the person who is currently Jane, but could be anybody in a general sense. And this is target ID two. And finally, I'm going to do the same thing, adding a Zoom OSC pin action through the user interface for target ID three this time around. So now if I hop back into the emulator and I put it side by side with the Zoom OSC instance, you'll see that as I click through Pat, John, Jane, and Liz, we're pinning the appropriate people. Again, not because of their username being some specific name that we were looking for, but just because the target ID happened to match. So this would work in any call with any set of names. You don't have to know them ahead of time. You can build this controller once and reuse it. So that's the basics that we wanted to get together, but there's one more thing I want to do. I want to be able to highlight the username of the person who has their hand raised if I want extra feedback on my stream deck to tell me, hey, this is somebody you might want to pin or spotlight or do something with so that you can bring them into the broadcast. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the instance feedback system. Now instance feedback is similar to a dynamic variable in the sense that it, it's going to depend on our OSC output. And, um, and by setting this up, we'll be able to affect properties of this key. So I'm going to hit add feedback and I'm going to select Zoom OSC user status feedback. Here I can select a user. What I would do in, you know, uh, in sort of a general sense is I would select them by target ID. But for the sake of this video, just to show you an alternate way of working with it, I'll go ahead and do it by username this time. So I'll, I'll go up here and I'll say, okay, I want to affect this person by specifying their username and I'll hard code in the name Pat for now, just so you can see a different way of working with this for educational purposes. Again, I'd use target IDs for this, but um, the property I'm interested in is their hand raised status. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And for this key, when the hand is raised, I want to turn the background, or sorry, the foreground to black and the background to yellow, let's say. And then I want to add another copy of instance feedback, um, sort of the same user, which again, we're going to specify as username just for again educational purposes. And uh, their hand raised status, when it's off, I want it to revert the key back to the way it was before. So now um, by, uh, by doing this, when, when Pat raises the hand, Pat's key will turn yellow and then it will turn back to black when uh, Pat's hand is no longer raised. So let's pop back into the emulator and let's put it side by side. Let's clear out the pins that we currently have. Go back to gallery view. Uh, here's the user control for Pat. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the reactions and raise a hand. And when I do that, you'll see that the key is turned yellow. And now we know that, hey, you know, uh, broadcaster, you might want to go grab this person into a single pin. You hit the button. Pat is pinned now. You can see that has happened behind here in Zoom OSC. And then let's say Pat is done answering or asking the question. 
lower the hand and there goes Pat's name reverting back to black and white so it's no longer emphasized among the group. So you can repeat this for all the keys, you can repeat this for as many uses as you want and really build out a powerful integration. So again, these are the building blocks of making controllers that are reusable between Zoom calls, pulling information back from Zoom OSC to optimize them for every situation that you're in and highlighting things and presenting feedback in a dynamic way that's really helpful. Again, small case study with the hand raise status, but you can look at the instance variables that we have available, of which there are so many. Again, you can access that through hitting the question mark here and seeing this document that shows all of the different application actions and instance variables and user variables that we provide. So quite a bit of work has been done. Again, it's still something we're actively developing. So feel free to ping us if you have a bug or a feature request or something you want to talk about. Um, and it, we'll, we'll work that in and try to make these controllers as powerful for you as possible. So that's the first introduction into our official instance on side of the BitFocus Companion. And keep us posted about the amazing things that you build with Zoom OSC in your stream deck. We'll catch you in the next one.